Hi guys. Hey everyone. Welcome to Make Two and a design in my town of Sims Peaks. This is on my island and it's right by the statue. <laughs> that statue. It's the second in what I'm going to call my landmark series of buildings. <laughs> my island is going to slowly be converted into a series of reproductions of famous real world or possibly imaginary buildings. On the island already we have Hogwarts from Harry Potter and here we have a very famous building originally built in 1935 near Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania in the United States called Falling Water. Let's take a look. This was designed by the famous architect called Frank Lloyd Wright for the Kaufman family and it's set in a river surrounded by trees and uh, forests and hills. So I've tried to capture the sense of the river here. I really like this. With this higgledy-piggledy swimming pool, yeah. which should be clear blue, but we've actually purposely let it go a little bit dirty. So it's got more of a natural light green turquoise hue. Mm -hmm. Now this building is actually on three floors proper, but it's actually taking up five floors so that I could get the right effect that I wanted for this house. And what typifies this house is the really big balconies that kind of jut straight out from the building so that literally while you're in some of the rooms and on some of the balconies, you're over the river itself. And the top floor here is just to get this small little piece of this jutting out thin piece of, of stone, which is a very significant part of the building itself. So that's an overview. It's a pretty big building. It's not that big in real life. It's just got, I think, was it four bedrooms? But it takes up almost the whole of this premium lot because I wanted to get a relatively good sense of scale with the balconies to the height. And because these Sims floors are so high, I actually had to make it all really wide and, and long. So what I've done, I tried to conform as much as possible to plans and models that are available online. So thanks to Falling Water official website and other architects who provided such great information. And also personal knowledge, because we've been to visit it. Yep, we did actually go there last summer, so that was really exciting. Now how you actually get to the building, first of all, is by a bridge over the river. So I've recreated that here. Normally the bridge would just lead straight to a path that goes straight to the building, but here I've made a bit of a compromise. You go down some stairs and then into what is the first floor, which is really the would be the basement level in real life. This doesn't in real life the building starts kind of on rocks because it's on a hillside, so this doesn't really exist. But what I've tried to create on this floor, apart from just stairs to go up to the first floor proper, is kind of the offices for the estate. This is now a museum, which is how we got to go to it, and it's people are trying to maintain and restore the building to all its glory from the 1930s. So here we have an office for maybe the director of the Frank Lloyd Wright Falling Water Institute. There's a corridor where guests would come in, visitors like us, and there's a little uh, lecture hall where you can watch videos or listen to people talk about falling water. A restroom, just because. Another set of offices for people who work there. And then facilities, hot water and a fuse box for the entire building. I think this is pretty realistic from what I remember of our visit. Yeah, this yeah. is actually set in the garage, the garages right. to falling water, not in the building itself. But it, it does have these kinds of things to it. Now, this is actually the first floor itself, which is kind of like, yeah, the, even though it's the second floor, it's kind of the, the first floor. So these balconies sticking out are meant to be over what was the driveway, right? Yeah, yeah. So I've taken, maybe this should be on the floor above, but then you want it to be near the ground. So these are actually one, build, one big balcony with a gap, mm -hmm. gaps between them, which I've tried to represent here. Um, so there should be a balcony, another balcony coming across the top to close these fingers off, but I, that's impossible to do. And guys, a lot of the balcony techniques in this video, we've shown how to do in a previous video called How to Build Balcony Bridges. Yeah, this definitely takes balconies to the extreme. And there's yeah. one or two ways I did them. Not for this one right here, but for the ones on this floor and the floor above that I if just by watching the videos, you won't know how I did them. They are a little bit crazy. <laughs> okay. Uh, I had to really stretch how to do them, but I'm sure you guys are super smart and play around with Sims, you will figure it out. But if you are super interested to know, 
let us know in the comments and we may do a specific video for how to make very large balconies that extend in this way. So you come in and the most of this floor is dedicated to this really huge living room space which for the time in the 30s was really really modern. Nowadays a lot of us have big multi-purpose living rooms with dining tables and kitchens and TVs but back then I think this was very very rare. I've had to combine it both being indoors and outdoors where where this wall is that's where the room stops and outside here it's a balcony but I've still tried to get the sense of what the building this room is actually like. So what you're saying is in real life the bit on the balcony should technically be indoors. Yes. But because of the limitations of Sims Free Play, where you can't have a room extending over empty space, you've had to kind of pretend and put it on the balcony. That's exactly right. And I wanted to get the balcony effect so you can see, you get that effect there. Yeah. I had to have this, you can see just underneath this room in the middle just as a support stand for part of the balcony. But I wanted to have the balcony as much as possible just overhanging the river. But this room is kind of similar to the original. There are stairs going up to the next floor. There's a nice big dining table, paintings on the walls, a little corridor over at the top left of the screen, a huge fireplace, which in real life looks absolutely amazing with this specially customized big spherical cauldron that goes in to heat things up on the fireplace. There's a beanbag chair here, which I think is a preteen one. And there's another one on this side. And though, yeah, you think that's not really appropriate for a fancy architecture house, but they did have this kind of low level seating throughout. Yeah. And I didn't just want to go with overly formal sofas, so I did mix it up. Just a planter in the corner and as old fashioned as I could get with a stereo. <laughs> they actually do have the original stereo, which is built into furniture there, and it's actually at least two blocks wide, and it's this really huge, um, old fashioned kind of thing, but it does look really nice. In the outside area, you can't put sofas out here and I, I wish you could because there would just be a really long sofa where these four garden chairs are or balcony chairs are. And again, they kind of wrap around. This table and two chairs here are supposed to represent the desk. There's a very nicely customized carved desk in this place, which has space for two people to work. So that's what that is. Over here, there's access to the rest of the balcony just with one small ornament. So this would be proper balcony on this yeah, side. Yeah, this is real balcony. And the only final thing to say here is there are stairs down, which there are in the real building, which take you down to a little inlet pool. So I've had that go down straight to the river. So if you want to get very close to nature, you can. But while you're sitting in any of these chairs here, you're hearing the babbling of the water as it flows downstream all around you. Very cool. So through this door from the great room, you get to the kitchen. And again, I think these these are, are these are Scandinavian yes. countertops. I think these are most similar to the ones in the actual house. And it is actually left. This is roughly what it looks like. Things are in the rough position as they actually are in the kitchen, including this you saw it a second ago from a particular angle. There are windows on all, or at the corners. And though that's now something that seems very easy to do in Sims Free Play, we obviously couldn't do it before. So when we first got corner windows, I didn't mean to think, oh, falling water, because that I think was one of the first buildings ever to actually have corner windows. Yeah, there it is. So there we go. Yeah. And then just further along the corridor, there's a little um, rec room for the staff. So let's go up to the next floor via these stairs. This takes us to the first of two bedroom floors. First one here, there's a little corridor here to give a very small, it would be a bit bigger in real life, uh, and it's got a, a teenage bed here. Uh, but this is a guest room with a lovely view over the river. Here is the mistress's bedroom, which was the biggest and nicest bedroom in the whole property. She didn't have a computer desk in here, but there is still a nice desk with a nice lamp and chair. So hopefully that's not too much of a compromise. And from here, there's, you can see the social points, big glass door, which takes you out to her own private balcony, which is just massive. 
It's massive in your life. It's massive here. Yeah, she and her son, you'll see the son's bedroom later, but she and her son, I think, got the best out of the house. Yeah, the master didn't do so well, the man <laughs> of the house. Uh, so this balcony overhangs the one below, mm. and both of them obviously overhang free space. Yeah, I don't. Have, I have no idea how you did this. You have to build, the shortcut is you have to build both of them at the same time. You can't build one, you can't uh, build... Okay. Uh, the bottom floor and then the second floor and then the third floor you have to build them both at the same time to make it work and you have to have a temporary building that you move and build and move and build right. in order to get the balcony this is actually made of about six or seven individual balconies <laughs> that all okay. stretch out as kind of balcony bridges so here yeah you just have a, a lovely restful spot for the lady of the house and her guests to come and relax now, she does in real life have an ensuite and a dressing room, but I couldn't fit both of those in here. But I have managed to squeeze in a communal bathroom. There's a bath, which I think is not the fanciest bath, but I think that's fitting for the 30s. And then through this little slightly awkward shape, I've managed to squeeze in a toilet as well. Very nice. I actually think that the floor really is basically the floor that I remember from the house, like that weird kind of... Yeah, I actually think the this, this should be on the walls. This is yeah. more like cork. Yeah, maybe that's why. And I'm the cork should be on the walls. Mm -hmm. And the floor was a, a very concrete kind of yeah, like a very deep red concrete. Yeah. So I've gone. You can see here the uh, Latin villa stucco mm -hmm. walls and the kind of cork looking floor to try and get that effect. In the real house, I think most of the floors certainly in the great room are kind of very natural rock mm -hmm. and the rest of the house is kind of concrete but i just wanted to keep it looking a little bit more modern because you can't quite replicate that in sims free play moving along the corridor we have the third bedroom and this is the master's bedroom <laughs> i actually think he did have a very small bed i know i've gone for the the nasty single bed here but i think that is what it was actually like there's a fireplace so let's just turn that on i think there was a fireplace here and there was also a desk with a lamp that was very nicely carved. And again, like immediately the floor below, it's got these corner windows that we can't quite show you. You'll be able to see them from the floor ab above when we look outside. But they were there are, a second ago. Yeah, it's a bit strange. Anyway, there are corner windows on, on both sides. I think if you see a corner window, just pause yes. and keep the angle. Yeah. From here, to actually get... So the next floor, there should be stairs right next to these stairs, but there's also a second set of stairs outside on this balcony. So I've put those in here, and this balcony again, kind of relatively realistic. So we go up and I've used just the fire pole stairs to get access to what is the fourth floor, but would in real life be the third floor for this property. Here you can see, if we don't move it, yep, perfect. You can see the corner windows. So basically, it was the son who asked, who connected Frank Lord Wright to his dad. His dad had the big, deep pockets to pay for the whole house. And the dad has the smallest room out of anyone. Yep. This whole floor is for the son. Mm -hmm. uh, he designed some of the furniture up here, these bookcases that uh, line the corners. He didn't design the desk, I don't think. Frank Lloyd Wright, the architect, also did most of the interior furnishings and designed the desk. And it really is, yeah, all the interior furnishings he designed are really beautiful. There's a big fireplace in the corner behind the desk. And then from there, you move through to his private suite. I've got the product red, I think this is an Eames chair. Mm -hmm. So kind of almost the same period, just for relaxing, leading through again to a similarly patterned, sort of wallpapered and floored, bathroom this one this one with a shower to save on space and from there you get into his bedroom where again he has a, a lovely view I've got a little bit of extra space here so I put in a little dressing table for him and he has access to a little balcony which I have artificially cordoned off with these screens in the actual house this rest of this long balcony it doesn't actually have any railings to it it's just more of a roof overhang thing mm. but I, I couldn't get that in sims you'll also see that this little space is empty because this is just a big support pillar that runs up through the house so if we move to the fifth floor this is literally just the roof and the whole purpose of this floor is just to capture 
this bit of rock to make it look a little bit more like the real house. And from this angle, you can see those corner windows going all the way down. So that's it, that's Falling Water. A lot of use of windows in strange places, a lot of use of light and some crazy use of balconies. Yeah. Uh, I'm just so happy with this new DIY Homes update <laughs> that you can now do things like this. This is something we looked at people playing Sims 3 or Sims 4 and we think, wow, if only we could do such weird things in Sims 3 play. You can't do curves, you can't do everything, but this is really, yeah, you can do an awful lot and you can make some pretty strange looking houses now. Yeah. Well, I, I basically think this is probably one of the best things you have built in Sims 3 Play, and it's super impressive. I posted pictures of it to Instagram while it was still in progress, and we even got a couple of like legit architecture people who, <laughs> you know, liked the photo or thumbs up the photo or whatever it is you do on Instagram. So, pretty cool. Yeah, and I, I'm pretty pleased with it, and I hope you've enjoyed this tour as well. I will say that I think my next project in the landmark series of Sims Peaks populating my island with famous monuments and buildings is going to be the White House <laughs> from Washington DC. So I'm gonna have, I can't do round rooms like the Oval Office is obviously oval, but I'm gonna give it my best shot because I think that's a house. So why not try and make a, a white looking house? If you have ideas of other buildings, real or from fiction that are famous and just about possible in Sims Free Play. Please do let me know in the comments and I will see if I can build any of them after I've done the White House. Thanks for watching.